Hey guys, <clears throat> excuse me. Ooh. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to evening prayer. I got a bunch of scriptures to share. Not a whole bunch, but enough. Uh, and I have a comment that I want to read that shows the result of what's been going on and how it's positive. Um, and I was just going through some emails and I uh, already got my psalm for tomorrow morning too, which is amazing. Uh, this is how the Lord works. You know, the blessings pour out more the closer you draw to Him. And this isn't something that you do as, as, a, as a work, as something as you do as uh, to... Really, to, it's not really something you do to please Him. Excuse me. You do, it does, but it's not. It's if your de desires go that way. If your desire is Him, everything changes. Uh, basically, I've turned a corner spiritually, and I love it because it's going the right direction. And it's biblically accurate. I had a lot of people that were calling me names here recently. And people are still calling me names. But I don't care. I don't watch their videos anymore. I don't watch any hardly anybody's videos anymore. Uh, just a few people. Um, I'm more focused on study now. I'm drawing closer to the Lord. Learning more about studying to show myself approved. And I'm trying to get you guys a much more... Um, a much deeper message into what the scriptures say and what's going on and as it pertains to us and as the changes happen in our lives as we grow this isn't a this really isn't a ministry for baby christians though i welcome you if you're a new christian and if you have questions by all means email me most of my video descriptions have the email i'll do my best to answer with scripture um, but the whole thing is to open this up all these things up that people are in question about uh, with a deeper understanding because as I'm receiving it, I'm sharing it with you guys. And it's awesome. And my whole ministry has been doing this ever since the January of 2019. Growing towards something better. And I've made stops along the way. I just got out of one recently. Where I got in with a group of people. Everything sounded good. And then turned out it was a roadblock. It was a stumbling block. And never went past it. A lot of Christians are different in their walks and in their growth. And some of them get stuck in certain spots. That's okay. I don't want to be stuck. I want to keep moving. I want to keep growing and going towards him and get as close to him as I can before he pulls us up. And that's what's happening here. And a lot of people, I condemned a lot of people that I shouldn't have. And I apologize for that. There's a lot of people out there that I labeled unnecessarily and incorrectly. And it was due to this group that I was tied up with because that's what they do. I mean, it, it, it was said in a live stream a couple days ago that... I said, if you don't believe in hell, you're not saved. One, I never said that. They said, that's not a salvation issue. But that same exact person that said that believes that not believing in a pre-trib rapture is a salvation issue. Yet that wasn't addressed in that live stream. So you see what I mean about the buddy system? It's all in whose hands whose hands are washing whose. You know? And I'm not into that stuff. I'm not into that playing ball stuff. Yep, Foxy, I actually have you. Hold on. I have you. Where's it at? There we go. Yeah, I have you on my list right now. Stand by, guys. You're seeing this real time. Went to the ER, couldn't help me. Had stomach problems and pain. Okay. Okay, got it down. All right, Foxy, gotcha. Do you see see how that works, guys? Sometimes it's while we're doing a video, prayer requests are coming in. I'm happy to do that. It really is a humble honor to be able to pray for you guys and to be able to make intercession for others that need it and just to be able to, all of us, to gather together in prayer. And I want to share this a comment by Nahalia. In this morning's prayer video, in this afternoon's video, you said, was everything that I knew, even when I wasn't saved. A lot of us have that testimony, Nahalia. I've, I can think back in my life before I was saved, and most of this stuff I already had. It was really weird, because it was like the salvation thing was just me graduating into salvation. Uh, my early life already was going this direction. Um... Except I thought I had to do or live honoring God for my salvation. We know that's not true. You don't have to do that 
for salvation. Salvation is by itself. And what you do in your life uh, becomes a result of your salvation. Uh, when I came across the Grace community, there was always something that didn't quite feel right. Me too. I couldn't reconcile why, what they were saying with the Word. But now you are teaching what I thought we should be doing, not for salvation, but to honor our God and our Lord. And you know, I think I was under attack also, because for like two months, I could not, I could get no sleep, and my sexual thoughts were really bad. After Sunday, I sleep really good, and no more bad sexual thoughts. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank the Lord. Amazing. And same here. After Sunday, everything changed. I slept almost all day today. I am so relaxed. And the, the attacks, I mean, the, I was still being attacked, because now all they have is my physical ailments to attack me with. But that's inconsequential. And it's awesome when you notice this and you see this and you realize, uh, I made a turn. That's what I was supposed to do. You know that's the Lord working in your life. And a lot of people are going to rail on this. I don't care what they think. What they think is irrelevant. What I think is irrelevant. It's what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says, if you're going to live for Him, live for Him. Here's what you ought to do. And I have scripture. I'm going to share, more scripture I'm going to share on that. This is, here, it's, the Bible says, here's what you ought to do. Walk like He walked. We can't be perfect. We strive for it. Even the apostles couldn't do it perfectly, but they strove for that. See, he's not looking at what you're doing. He's looking at why you're doing it. And if you're doing it, Lord, I want to honor you in my body. I, I, I want to be close to you. I love you and want to be as much like you and like you want me to be as I can. What is your will for my life? That I want to do. And when we come to that conclusion mentally, the knowledge of it, and the understanding enters into our heart. It's like the scriptures say, understanding is in the heart. We turn a corner spiritually, and he just takes that bucket of blessings and just pours it out. And everything changes. And it's amazing. People are already looking at me different. And the, the effect is not just with me either. It's reaching out to others. So much has changed in my... I was seeing changes in my brother and in his life. I was seeing changes all over the place. And it's awesome. Because... When people come together under the right frame of mind, in one accord, things happen. Good things happen. Notice all a lot of these things more people were commenting about when we started praying for the rapture. Look what happened. Things jumped forward exponentially. Yeah, they did. It's actually kind of shocking that just over 24 hours after we did that first prayer with the, with the, with the rapture verses, everything went ballistic. And it's getting worse. My daughter's falling off into that stuff now. I can't reach her. Okay, well, go do that. All this stuff, this riots and everything, is sucking everybody in like a, like a vortex. Not us. And this is going to be a terrible catalyst for the start of the tribulation. Plant all the seeds you can. If they won't receive it, move on. Mary Scarbo said it today. We do what we can, but we don't get stuck where we're at. We've got to keep moving forward. Because that's our personal growth. He'll get them. He'll grab them and he'll bring them along if it's meant for them to get saved. Not everybody is meant to be saved. Excuse me. So, don't stay, stand in one spot because you're waiting for people to believe. You keep moving forward. It's not that you don't love them. It's that, that there's more to this than that. Than just sitting in one spot saying the same thing over and over again, desperately hoping somebody's going to hear it and receive it. It's getting out of our comfort zone. It's getting out of our comfort zone to get into our comfort zone. It's kind of funny. Okay, let's go into the Bible. There's Psalm 35 for tomorrow. We're actually going to go to James 1, 22, 25. James 1, 22, 25. So 22 to, through 25, let me highlight those. So, I'm going to start in verse 21, because that's the beginning of the thought. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. This is a problem we have in the supposed grace community. There's different groups of people here. There's a lot of people who are taking offense that I'm using grace community. There's a lot of different names for different groups here, and different groups of people in their different types of beliefs, and even in their different walks, uh, here on YouTube and, and everywhere else. And I just use that as a generalized term. It's not a specific term because 
if I sit here and name every single name off, it'll take me an hour to get through just the first half of this video. So I use that as a general descriptive term, just like you say grasshoppers. Yeah, the grasshoppers are really bad this year. Ironically, new, quick newsflash, America is going to have their worst thing of, outcropping of grasshoppers that they ever had this year. It's about to get really hot, and they're going to go nuts. Locusts becoming a burden. Ecclesiastes 12. So we use that as a generalized term when you say, well, the grasshoppers are really bad this year. Okay, what kind of grasshoppers? Oh, I don't know. I just use that as a descriptive term. But you go out there and look, and there's like seven different types of grasshoppers out there. So it's just a descriptive term is all I'm using. And it's not, I'm not encompassing everybody in that descriptive term. I'm using that term to describe the majority, those that are falling under that. If you have understanding, you know that that's not speaking of a specific group of people. It's anybody who falls in that category. We don't know who all falls in that category. So we use that to get through the thought. Otherwise, if you sit there and take the time like that poor guy did from, uh, was it Sweden? I think it was Sweden. Doing his introduction, he was doing his greeting uh, for his speech he was going to do uh, in the UN. This was his last year or the year before. And it took him 15 minutes just to get through the good morning. Because he had to address every single gender and place and people. That's nonsense. That's childish. If you have understanding, you know... You just use a descriptive term to get everybody, and, and they know who they are. And then you move on. See, there's too many people that are standing in one spot, crying and complaining. Instead of they just take a step, that leap of faith, and they'll see everything and get better from there. I'm moving forward. And if anybody stays behind, that's their problem. So be a doer of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Let me read 25 again, because there are a lot of people in the grace community. Let me, let me make sure I do my quotation fingers so everybody understands. There's a lot of people that are in this community and in other groups that are missing a lot of this stuff because they don't want to offend anybody or be labeled a works heretic. I've got all those labels, and I'm happy to wear them. Jesus wore all them signs, too. I'm happy to wear those signs. What they say means nothing. What the Word of God says means everything. Verse 25 in James 1, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. I've heard this verse misquoted. They'll say word and not work. I don't know if it's intentional or by accident. Well, this is just one example of, of reasons why I broke from that group to come over here and to stand alone in the center of the path. I don't want to be over here on the side anymore. They can help those people get up on the path. I'm going to stay in the middle now. Um, I'm moving forward. I, no. I saw what goes on over there. I don't want to be a part of it. But a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Now, I want to share verse 26. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. What would be bridling your tongue? Now, a lot of people label that as uh, you not saying things negative against other people. You can't uh, call other people out. You can't say this. You can't say that. No, that's not bridling your tongue. Bridling your tongue is the things that shouldn't be said you don't say. The things that should be said you do say. Because when you bridle the tongue, it's not just holding it back. It's leading it forward, correct? When you bridle a horse, it's not just holding them back. It's leading them forward. It's controlling your tongue. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Deny the world, turn away from the world, walk away from the world. Now, if you keep reading James 1, you see that there's a whole lot more in there about that. It explains it. But this last section here, this last, um, what, five verses? No, six verses. Very good. And it, it talks to us. And there's so much more in the New Testament about this, but a lot of people don't build on this. You need to get saved. Yes, absolutely correct. Now what do you do? Just sit there and be saved. Don't worry about nothing else. No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says if you get saved, 
Great. Awesome. Welcome to heaven. Love it. Celebration. Whoa, blow the trumpet. Now let's get you growing. And let's build you up. And let's get you into the discipleship. So you can go out and you can fight for Christ too. I don't hear a lot of that. I don't hear almost none of it. Well, you're going to hear it here. I'm changing my ministry. I told you guys before there's going to be a big change in my ministry. Well, here it is. <laughs> now let's go to the next one. And it's 1 Peter 2.11. 1 Peter 2, 11. So, 1 Peter 2, 11. Let's see. Let's get to the beginning. Yeah, let's start right here on verse 6. Therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Simple. That's your salvation. Bam. Simple. Therefore, to you who believe. So now he's changing subjects, going, hey, you group. Notice he, he just used a general term, you who believe. Didn't specify who, who he was talking to. It's the believers. It encompasses everybody. Therefore, to you who believe... But that term is also only only referring to those who believe. So he, he's not looking at one group of people. It's all the people within and without that believe. He is a precious. He is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Listen to what he said again. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient... I'm, I'm very interesting to me how he worded that. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Interesting. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, they're, they're, it's, that's talking about the Jews. Mm, yeah. But notice he talks in verse 7 that it's to those who believe. Details, little details. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. That's us. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And now we change subjects again. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, this is not our world, this is not our home, heaven is, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Anytime we have that stuff in our life, that's an open door to allow satanic influence to come in and to lead us into uh, other false understandings and all kinds of stuff. So we strive to get rid of those things. We strive to shut those doors and lock them. Um, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. I'll read that verse again. Listen to this. Having your conduct honorable, that means living the life following after Christ, among the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles in this case aren't Gentile believers. It's everybody who's Gentile that's not saved. Those are Gentiles. It's actually almost everybody. That's, everybody's Gentile outside of the outside of the children of God. So that your conduct is honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. So plant the seeds. Plant those seeds, and God will take care of it. And it doesn't matter what they say about us. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what happens. We keep pushing forward and keep planting those seeds. What they say and do is irrelevant. But they can't help that seed getting planted. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme, or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of those who do good, just like what Jesus did. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free, 
yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants to God, honoring all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king's uh, submission to masters. Honor the king. He's talking about living a life, a holy life. Do it in the presence of everyone. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. For this is commendable. If because of conscience toward God one endures grief, suffering wrongfully, it's not about what you do, it's about why you're doing it. It's right there in the word. For what credit is it if, when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently, but when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. Doing the right thing and enduring it is commendable, even if they hate you for it. Let me read verse 20 again. For what credit is it if, when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. So like what happened this last week, I came out and jumped, just railed and blew the lid off all this stuff that's going on around here. Now I'm catching all kinds of hell on the back end of it, taking it patiently. I, he changed me to see all this for what it is, and now I'm gonna, just going to take it patiently. I'm going to take the name calling, I'm going to take the, the you know, blasting and, and stuff like that and all the hatred. It's okay. I'm not worried about it. Because I know all those people that are saved, that are doing this, he will bring out of that. I have faith in that. I know that none of this stuff has any effect on me because he is my Lord and he fights for me. So I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm not focused on that anymore. I'm focused on moving forward, coming to a greater understanding and a closer relationship to him. And they'll stay where they're at and they'll keep doing what they're doing and they'll never go past that. And that's okay. The Lord will take care of that. I don't have to take care of it. I don't have to respond to any videos. I've had a few people ask me, hey, you're going to respond to this video? No, why would I? It's not going to serve any purpose. The Bible takes care of that. This whole uh, discussion with annihilationism, Matthew 25, 46, blows it out of the water. Simple. I don't have to. The God, Word of God does it. For to this you were called. To what? Well, everything in verse 20. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Amen. Love it. That's awesome. Let me get the rapture verse up. 22.12. And then we're going to do some prayer. And we got a few names to lift up. So. Move my pen here. swap hands okay let's get into some prayer lord we come before you this evening this gloriously beautiful evening to give thanks for the rest to give thanks for the spiritual turn i for one am giving thanks for myself i know others will give thanks in their own way and during this prayer for the spiritual turn you created and i was allowed to turn you saw what my heart's desire was. You saw the confusion and the, and the problem that I was facing and couldn't rectify. And you gave me the answer and you, you changed this for me. Thank you. But you did something else. You took the guile. You took the anger. You took the hatred. You took the, the vitriol. You took all the things that I had going the other direction that I was out of my heart and away from those that say they love me but they're showing something a little different. I still love them, and I worry about them, and I pray for them. I lift them all up right now in intercessory prayer that you take the shades off their eyes that they see the truth and that they change, that they see what's going on and move toward you. This isn't about me. This isn't about what happened. This is about the, the negative influence that's going on over the body, over the whole world, and how it's catching all of us in its crosshairs. 
you're bringing us out of it. Those of us that want it, you're bringing us out of it. You're calling out your church to something better. You're, you're creating for yourself to present yourself a chaste virgin. Thank you for this amazing redirection in my walk with you. That my desire was to draw closer to you. My desire was to learn more about you. My desire was to please you. Oh, excuse me. And you're helping me do that. Thank you. You're opening up testimony for other people. You're opening up understanding for other people. You're putting joy in other people's hearts. Other people are being released from this these shackles that were put on from this uh, other community, this other group. And holding us in one place. And you're freeing us and allowing us to move forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the grace and mercy that you're showing us. Thank you for giving us a different, better understanding. Enacting and activating your will for us in our lives. That we may serve you like we want to. That we may stand before you and not have to hold our heads down in shame. And to not be ashamed. You're cleansing us. You're changing us, and I love it. I love that I'm able to be a part of it. Thank you. I humbly thank you for that. I was wicked and a sinner and broken and dirty and messed up, but you are bringing me out. You've cleansed me. You're changing me. You're creating in me your desire and will for what you want me to be, and I like that, and I choose that because I don't want to be anything else. And I think a lot of other people have this same understanding. Lord, I pray that you hold nothing against all those people that are railing. No matter what side they're on, what group they're on, who they are, I love all of them. And I lift all of them up in prayer. I pray you hold, no, hold nothing they do against me to their account. Nothing. I utter total, complete forgiveness on everything. Because I don't want to have any grudges as I step over to the other side. I don't want to hold any contempt as I step over to the other side. I want my heart to be cleansed from that. So look for those things inside me, Lord, and remove them. Look for those things that you don't want to be there and remove them. I, I, my desire is that you remove them and put in place of them your attributes. Put in place of them your personality that I may be more like you towards, the, uh, towards others. I want to be changed. My desire is to be different. I know it's going to incur a whole lot of wrath, but I'm, I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm not focused on that. That's not my desire. My desire is you, because I don't have to answer to anyone else but you. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing testimony. And all the way back to the beginning of my life to now, I see it all unfolding. And it's awesome to see just how active you really were in my life, even before I was saved. <clears throat> a lot of other people have this same testimony. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Keep us going the right way. Keep us on the right path. Keep us in the center. Those that don't want to move forward, Lord, we have to walk away and let them be. You did. You never stopped and waited for people. You kept moving and they either followed you or they didn't. We have to make a choice to follow you or not follow you. We have to decide if you are what we want or you aren't what we want. But I pray everyone that believes that they see this too and they choose you too and come after you also. Help us to be strong. Help us to stand. Help us to confess. Help us to uh, preach truth to everyone in a loving, humble way. You really changed my heart this week. My flesh is fighting against it, but I ain't giving the flesh what it wants. Because it's gonna have to just it's gonna have to just put its head down and be quiet because the spirit is going to have control. Your spirit in me. Thank you, Lord. I have two names to lift up, Lord. Rhonda praying for Josh that the demonic attacks will stop and he will wake up. And Foxy, she's sick, it's in her abdomen. She's struggling really bad. Went to the ER, they couldn't help her. Lord, I understand that because that's one of those demonic attacks that we're struggling with. Because I'm having that too. I've had that and am having that. It's a, it's, I'm actually sick to my stomach now. It's been like that for two days. When these changes happen, 
the the demons around us, the devil, doesn't want that to happen. He's attacking our flesh. Lord, I pray that you rebuke him and his influences from our lives, from affecting us physically, from affecting us spiritually. You drive him off. Now, some of these things we have to go through. You, you deem us worthy to suffer for your name's sake. Thank you for that. Thank you for those sufferings. But if it be your will, drive them off. Rebuke them and turn them away that they trouble us no more. And strengthen us to walk according to your will. Strengthen us to endure according to your will. Strengthen us to stand and be a light to the world according to your will. With all that being said, Lord, we pray for the rapture. We pray for you to catch us away, to deliver us from this world that doesn't want us anymore, clearly. This world that is ripping itself to part, us apart is bursting at the seams. Everything has gone completely backwards. It is impossible not to see the tribulation coming. It is impossible not to see what's happening and see anything else but the tribulation. We know the rapture happens right before that. We know the deliverance, the rescue of the church happens right before that. We see it in your word. Those of us that you've opened our eyes to see it, see it clearly. I pray all of these negative, negative thoughts, all these negativity, all these, um, these misunderstandings all cease today. I make a prayer of intercession that they end today and that we all turn and look for you, focus on you, watch for you. In Revelation 22, 12, it says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Lord, you are the Savior. You are the Messiah. You are the Deliverer. You are the Redeemer. And we're waiting for that day of redemption. We pray for that day of redemption. We pray for you to come and to deliver us. We pray the Holy Father gives the command that you come and you collect your church. We don't want to be here anymore either. But as long as we're here, help us to proclaim the truth. Help us to proclaim the word. Help us to preach and teach and deliver a great testimony and plant seeds with people before we leave. Because we know in the beginning of that tribulation, you're going to water those seeds. And, and our Father is going to provide the increase. Thank you for that, too. We praise you and we bless you. We honor you and we glorify you in all that we do. Help us to continue and grow in that. And to look upon you and to keep our mind on heavenly things and not things of this world. That you may be glorified in us and in our lives. And everyone may see it and come to glorify you as well. It is in your name, Lord. We pray blessings upon you, upon our Holy Father. Lift you both your names up on high. We pray for peace for Israel and blessings for Israel, the true Israel. And we pray blessings and peace upon all the brethren, every one of them. We pray mercy for the unbeliever. And we pray for you to come. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. I'm telling you, it's a really big change. It's just, it's, it's amazing to be able to witness this within myself but I'm seeing other people talking about the change happening in them too everything is so much more so much crisper and more vibrant to me now colors and shapes and edges everything and the I'm so much more relaxed than what I was just it's like a burden has just shed off my shoulders and I love it and I want to keep going that direction I want to keep drawing closer to him my desire is to be closer to him and my desire is that he shows me the way and that he shows you the way too so you can achieve this and you can have this as well and have this peace of not worrying about anything I'm not worried about anything I'm not fearful whatever happens happens I'm ready for it I, I'm ready to move on because I know whatever, whatever if anything here in this earth ends in my death I know I step right into his presence and if it doesn't then the rapture happens, and I go there, go that way. Look for the Lord. Look to the Lord. Pray to Him. Talk to Him. Read your scriptures. Spend time with the Word, with Him. And He'll help you understand everything. I know. It's happening to me. 
I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you guys in the next video.